University Teaching, Research and Referral Mission Hospital is happening today. That event has already begun. The chief guest is Baringo Senator Gideon Moy. He's already there in attendance. And I will hand you to my colleague Patrick Amimo. Patrick. Thank you. We are at the Kabarak University for the launch of the ultra modern uh, teaching and referral facility that is at a cost of 45 billion shillings. Uh, this particular facility, the, this occasion is, is graced by President Uhuru Kenyatta, but the idea to start up this referral and teaching hospital was mooted by former President Daniel Toroy Teach Arab Moy. We've already witnessed the groundbreaking ceremony, and now we are going to the nitty gritties of this particular facility, which will be a 500 bed facility at Kabarak University with another 200, 250 bed capacity in Nairobi. Uh, this is the first private university that will be having at least a teaching and referral hospital that will also help uh, in boosting the healthcare delivery system of the country. We know that uh, we are currently facing a backlog of, of, um, of patients in our hospital which are reeling under the, the weight of patients. And with, this, uh, with the inclusion of this particular facility, we th will go and see the improvement of the healthcare system, healthcare delivery system in the country. Country. This particular facility will also be linked to 23 mission hospitals across the country. We have Tenwek, we have Chogoria, we have Naivasha, which are expected to be brought on board and they will benefit from this particular yeah, uh, facility once it is constructed. It will also have uh, uh, ensure that the students that are undergo medicine at this particular university also get the skills and it's also expected that uh, those out of, the, out of the country will also have an opportunity to, to, be, to come back to the country and be employed as doctors in this particular facility. So the, 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 the occasion is ongoing. We have President Uhuru Kenyatta present, former President Daniel Larup Moy, and also the Baringo Senator Gideon Moy, who is here together with the Anglican Church, head of the Anglican Church, uh, uh, Bishop uh, Bishop Sapit. So I'm handing you back, uh, I'm handing you over to this, pro, to the program uh, because it's ongoing. Uh, let's enjoy the rest of the viewing. They deserve a better clap for a wonderful, wonderful presentation indeed. This is the Cabrak University and Chapel Choir under the able leadership of Malimu Frederick Ngala. I told Frederick Gala one time that uh, there are two communities that I believe when God created the world, he put music in their blood. The first are the Tanzanians, the second are the Luyas and the Luos of this country. The rest of us, tunafuata <laughs> tunyayo. It is my pleasure to invite on this podium Dr. Henry Kiplagat, who is the acting vice chancellor, Kabrak University, to give us a word of welcome. Cabinet Secretary, Minister of Health, Dr. Cleophas Mailu, Kabarak University Board of Trustees members, uh, represented by Honorable Senator Gideon Moy and Honorable Raymond Moy, distinguished guests, the bishops, all the partners, stakeholders, of the Kabarak University Teaching Research and Referral Mission Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, praise the Lord. I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the Board of Trustees, the University Governing Council, University Management, staff, 
students and parents of this university to welcome all of you to this very, very important function in the calendar of events of Kabarak University. Later on, I know we have so many visitors who have come. They shall be introduced, and I would like to take this brief opportunity to tell you that Kabarak University is your second home. So please feel most welcome. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation and joining us today. So may the Lord bless us as we continue today in this program. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. This is a wonderful place to be and I trust that that welcome makes your heart warm. I'll be inviting Malimu Ngala to come. In your program at the very end on the back page, a beautiful hymn to God be the glory. Let me ask Malimu Ngala to come. He will lead us in that beautiful hymn. May I request you most kindly to rise. Our meditation today is coming to us from 
one who has been seasoned in the word, the most reverend Dr. Jackson Olesa Pitt. He is the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Kenya and my neighbor, a man who comes from a community that prides itself in owning all the cows in the world. If you have some cows, you took some from them. Archbishop, it's my honor. Thank you very much. Uh, Reverend Matthews for giving me this opportunity to come and share God's word to us this morning. Uh, our guest of honor, uh, CS for Health, Dr. Mailu, Senator Gideon, my fellow bishops, and all of us present, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want us to pray so that God will speak to our hearts and our minds as we meditate upon his word this morning. Heavenly Father, we are gathered here today to worship you as a people you have called for yourself, as a nation, and as individuals whom you have birthed this great vision through our Father our retired president, who have established these institutions, Kabarak University, and this other great vision of establishing a mission hospital for the care of humanity. Lord, we are gathered to celebrate you. We celebrate our fellowship with you. We celebrate the ministry of Christ, which established your church to minister as a caregiver to the people you have called for yourself. And now, Lord, as we meditate upon your word, use me as you will, speak to our minds and our souls. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. I am so humbled to have been invited and given this opportunity to share God's word very, very shortly as uh, God speak to us in this commemoration and the memorable service where we are all gathered to break the ground for the establishment of Kabarak Teaching and Referral Hospital in this university. We really want to thank God for the great vision that God has given our retired president and his family and the entire family of Kabarak University for the establishment of this institution. I'll be speaking from Paul's letter, uh, Peter's letter, the first letter of Peter, chapter 5, from verse 2. Uh, and I will read very, very shortly, but I will concentrate on two verses. This is what Peter says to the churches. He was speaking as an elder among elders. And he says, give a shepherd's care to God's flock among you, exercising oversight, not merely as a duty, but willingly under God's direction, not for shameful profit, but eagerly. And do not lord it over those entrusted to you, but be an example to the flock. Then when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way, you who are younger, be subject to the elders and all you Clothe yourselves with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And God will exalt you in due time if you humble yourselves under his mighty hand by casting all your cares or anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober and alert. Your enemy the devil, like a roaring lion, is on the prowl, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, strong in faith, 
because you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are enduring the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of grace, and this is what I will pay attention to, who called you to eternal glory in Christ, will himself do four things. Restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him belongs the power forever and ever. These words are so powerfully and eloquently delivered by one of the apostles of Jesus Christ, a witness of all what happened to Christ, a witness of the ministry of Jesus Christ, a witness of all the miracles and the sayings and the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the topic I want to uh, uh, address myself to is in that verse two, give a shepherd's care to the flock among you. A shepherd's care. We are gathered here because our former president has given a shepherd's care to this country in many respects. He established so many schools, built so many churches, established this institution, and laid a firm foundation where humanity can be given care. Care is a key thing in the ministry of Jesus. Christ himself was a caregiver. In his entire ministry, he healed the sick in every village he went, he fed the hungry, he raised the dead, and forgave sinners. He was a gear giver. During the missionary enterprise in this country, every mission station was characterized by four things. A church, a school, a dispensary, and a garden. And they are all for caregiving. To give care to the soul through the church and the ministry and the forgiveness of our sins. To give care to the mind through the school and education. To give care to food security and nutritional balance through the garden where a balanced diet was being and promotive health was being promoted. And to give care to the physical ailments through the dispensary. That is what is coming up uh, in Kabarak University as an entity. It is right from a nursery school, a primary school, a high school, a university, a church, a community of believers. Uh, the environment around this farm is surrounded by a farm where food security is being addressed. And now they're establishing a hospital to complete the caregiving aspect. And uh, as we give care, it is to complete the thrust of the entire mission of the Church of Jesus Christ. And the thrust of that mission is summarized in the four words that followed each other. The God of grace will in his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore you. This message, the Christian message is about restoration. It's foremost the restoration of our souls through the forgiveness of our sins. When our sins are forgiven, the Lord restores us back. Something that is being restored is being put back into good quality use. And that's what the message of the gospel is all about. Restoration of our souls. It's also the restoration of our relationships. When relationships are broken and you are mending them, you are restoring those relationships. It is the restoration of our environment that is so dear to us. It is the restoration, putting back to the intended cause and use. And we are here today to celebrate that aspect of restoration of our lives. Through the forgiveness of our sins, Paul says, you become a new creation. The old has passed, the new has come. You are now a new creature through the forgiveness of sins. We are restored back to God. Uh, the hospital idea and the reason why we need it is to re for the restoration of our health. When we are attacked by viruses and diseases, we need something to restore back our health. And the entire healing process is about restoration of our health. And that is what 
we are celebrating today, the restoration of our health. As a nation, we are looking forward for the restoration of this country. From the many divisions we see, that God himself will restore us and make us one indivisible, united country called Kenya. It is only God who can restore. He has confirmed he will restore. We need the restoration of our environments. You can see the erratic rains now. We have depleted our forest. We have damaged our water towers. The rains have become erratic. God help us to restore back our environment. It is about restoration. When God restores, he says, then the next thing that will follow is confirmation. I will confirm you as mine. I will seal you. And Jesus has already sealed us with the covenant of his blood when he died on the cross for us to confirm us as his own. And that's why John, in his gospel, chapter 5 of uh, the gospel of John, verse 23 and 24, the Lord Jesus says to the disciples, Truly, truly, I say to you, if you hear my words, believe in he who has sent me, you have passed from death to life. You now belong to me. We belong to him. He confirms. So the Lord will confirm us. And through this ministry, God is going to confirm his own. Then the second part will follow is the strengthening of ourselves. He said, I will strengthen you. Strengthening is putting more power, injecting energy, building the capacity and capability. God is about giving us his power and authority to minister. You know, when the disciples were in Ao, that their leader has died after Jesus died and resurrected, they didn't know how to begin again. The disciples even began to go back to their old businesses of fishing in the sea. He reached out to them. But he said, I want you to go to Jerusalem. Watch over and pray in that upper room until you are clothed with the power from on high. Then you go out as my witnesses, beginning from Jerusalem into Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the world. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the empowerment of his church. So he sent the Holy Spirit to empower and strengthen the church to minister. And again, Paul says, in these earthen treasures of clay, weak and useless, the Lord has put his treasure, his Holy Spirit, so that we can do wonders and don't claim it to ourselves. It is the Holy Spirit doing it. And the church has been called over the years, and that is the vision and mission behind this great project and idea that we are gathered here today to celebrate the power of God in us that has drawn us from different continents, different places, to come and finance and resource the beginning of this project, which is going to be a great relief to the people of this country and in the region. Therefore, it is about the power of God. And the power of God is different from the power we seek as humanity. He's, when he says, I will strengthen you, I'll give you authority and power, it is through power through service. What, why Christian uh, ministry is so different from many other uh, engagements is that we exercise power through service. And we draw our power through serving people. That's where we draw power. Jesus drew his authority and power by serving us to the cross. And that's how Christian ministry draw its ability and power. Through service, not loading it over uh, God's heritage and people. Serve as a caregiver, a shepherd, under God's direction. The last I want to, uh, and the final I want us to, to look at is the Lord says, I will establish you. I will establish you as a people. I will establish you as mine. I will lay uh, the right foundation and firm foundation that establishes you as one that belongs to me. Many a times we confuse ourselves as human beings that we think we are established when we have a big name. We think we are established when we have a lot of resources and money and created empires. That is not what establishes. What establishes is the right values and principles that God has taught us in his word. We can have many, and we have seen many families that had a lot that can be decided in this world, but live until the owner of the family de departs. 
because the children are not grounded with their right values, that empire is crumbled within a day. Have you not seen that? It happens every day. So what builds a nation, a people, a community, a family, an individual, is not just the acquisition of resources, but it is the values in which those resources are governed. So what governs us? What establishes us? Are the values of love, the value of trust, the value of caregiving. That is what is going to establish us and encourage us to go on and on and on. And therefore, brothers and sisters, as we gather today to celebrate this great project and a big stride in our nation, let us remember this nation will only be established when we have the right values governing us. At the center of what people call sustainability is not the availability of resources. It's not even the availability of manpower. It is a presence of governing principles and values. That is what is going to uh, get a nation uh, uh, to go ahead as one united. That is what will grow and sustain people and families and individuals and people. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this great vision and this great project, let us turn our hearts and our minds to God, the one who is going to establish us to be able to uh, establish a nation, establish a society, establish a community of believers, so that love, mercy, walking humbly with God, as the prophet Micah says, become, become our daily practice. The big problem we see now in this country and many other countries of the world as secularism set in is a big disconnect between our Christian faith and our Christian practice. Can we, we who are believers in God, make sure that what we say we believe in is what we practice every day under God's direction. May God, the honor of all things, the source of all power, bless us as a congregation today, in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, sir. Deep, clear, elaborate in our hearts. A story is told of two men. They were carving stones and somebody passed by and asked one of them what they were doing. The first man said, we are chiseling stones. The next man was asked, what are you doing? And he said, we are building a cathedral. One man just saw a stone. He was busy with the stone. The other man saw the greater vision that this stone will become a cathedral. I remember the words of His Excellency one time sharing with a group of us this vision. For some people, they were just words. For some of us, it is a real vision that is coming true. We thank God. Senator, your brother Raymond, the family, may God bless your family, your father, and this nation. The General Secretary, Chuck, who are involved in this journey are here today. We thank God for their presence and for their faithfulness and commitment walking with this project this far and I believe to the end. Dr. Samuel Mwenda, the General Secretary will be here to address us. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you. Um, His Excellency, the, the second President of Kenya, Daniel Arap Moy, uh, Honorable Cabinet Secretary for Health, uh, Dr. Kriopa Mailu. Uh, Honorable Senator, Honorable Members of Parliament, uh, religious leaders present, development partners who are with us, the University Council, 
the Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed, good morning. We are greatly honored and deeply humbled by the invitation to this special occasion. Thank you for the generosity of inviting the Christian Health Association of Kenya family to participate in this great and landmark event. We have come in big numbers, uh, led by religious leaders from various denominations who are part of the Chuck family. Indeed, Chuck is very grateful for the strategic partnership with the Kabarak University, particularly on the area of the medical school <clears throat> and the uh, Kabarak University Teaching Research and Referral Mission Hospital. The Christian Health Association of Kenya is a national network of the Protestant churches, health facilities, that includes the mission hospitals uh, at different levels, the health centers, dispensaries, uh, community-based healthcare programs, and medical training uh, colleges. Uh, we currently have membership of over 575 across Kenya from 50 denominations. And it, it was established way back in 1946 uh, and has all along been dedicated uh, to promoting access to quality healthcare, working very closely uh, with the Minister of Health of the Government of Kenya. Uh, CHAC uh, coordinates, therefore, uh, you know, engagement with the government and other relevant ministries, county governments, health departments, and other development partners in health, as well as the private sector. <clears throat> Our chief guests, the churches in Kenya, and indeed across Africa, have been dedicated, have dedicated their efforts and resources over many decades towards developing a resilient and sustainable health uh, services and medical education that is founded on strong Christian uh, foundation and inspired by the example of our Lord Jesus Christ in his commissioning that he sent uh, his disciples and his followers to go out to the world to preach, to teach, and to heal the sick. Missionaries that came to Kenya some of 100 years ago from Europe, from America, established churches, schools, and mission hospitals, uh, setting a firm foundation for the socioeconomic transformation uh, that our country continues to experience. The vision that was planted over a century ago, for example, by AIC in Kijabe, in Ditain, in Kapsawal, the Presbyterian Church in Kikuyu, in Tumutumu, in Chogoria, the Methodists in Maua, the Adventists in Kendu, the Anglicans in uh, Kaloleni, Kilifi, in Maseno, the Africa Gospel Church in Tenwek, Friends Church in Kaimosi and Lugulu, Church of God in Muhila, among many others, has been able to record steady growth over the years due to faithful commitment to the Christian ministry with good stewardship. To many citizens in our country, mission hospitals have been their source of empowerment and health services. The nursing colleges these mission hospitals have uh, produced, in these mission hospitals, have produced thousands of well-trained and nurtured nurses who deliver quality services with professionalism and compassion and a lot of dedication. From the humble beginnings of modest medical clinics, some of the mission hospitals have grown into national referral institutions of great reputation and excellence. We are very grateful to God to see, for example, Tenwek Hospital uh, 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 becoming a leading hospital in heart surgery in this country. Kijabe Hospital, through the partnership with Bethany, is now leading in pediatric surgery, including neurosurgery. Kikui Hospital leads is a, is a household name in eye uh, care and surgery. Kiwa leading in orthopedic surgery. Kendu leading in HIV treatment. Uh, and you can go on and on. Uh, I've just been informed Kiku is dreaming about beginning to do a kidney transplant in the near future. These developments have been possible through visionary leadership, good stewardship, dedication, and hard work by the church, the management of these institutions, and the, the staff who have been, uh, been called to this ministry. But also, very important, close collaboration with the government of Kenya, the Minister of Health, and partnership with missionaries and mission partners uh, across the world. In the year 
2014, uh, Kabarak University entered a partnership uh, memorandum of understanding with mission hospitals affiliated to CHAC, which has enabled uh, the university to roll out, uh, in the, through this partnership, the family medicine postgraduate training for doctors uh, in collaboration with PCH Ogoria Hospital, AIC Kijabe Hospital, and Tenwek Mission Hospital. This partnership will be extended to include uh, clinical placement for doctors, nurses, clinic officers, pharmacists, and other paramedical cadres. We will, this year, uh, be extending that partnership to include Mawa Hospital, PCA Tumutumu, AIC Retain, AIC Kapsawal, and will thereafter continue to expand to other mission hospitals. In order to adequately facilitate these training programs, we need to refurbish, expand, and upgrade the infrastructure, equipment, technology, and housing facilities in these uh, institutions. <clears throat> we are very grateful <clears throat> to His Excellency Daniel Arab Moy for his generosity of extending the Kabarak University Teaching, Research, and Referral Mission Hospital project to include infrastructure development and equipment of 23 mission hospitals across various de denominations and across this country. This partnership will transform the aged infrastructure and modernize these hospitals to give them a new status. We are excited to be part of this project. We wish to assure all stakeholders and partners of our total commitment and support. We are inspired by His Excellency's vision um, of creating a unique Christian health services referral network that will deliver high quality health services, medical education, and, and, and participate in research in this nation and beyond. Chuck and religious leaders are very grateful to the uh, government of His Excellency President Kenyatta for the leadership and their commitment in, um, in uh, improving health services in this country. We note with appreciation the free maternity services uh, program, which has now been extended to, to faith-based health facilities through the Linda Mama program, which is uh, now managed by NHIF. The expansion of the National Hospital Insurance Fund cover packages uh, towards universal health uh, coverage, and we, that has benefits across many service areas, and we are very grateful that we are, our mission hospitals are part of that, those providing these services. And the expansion and modernization of um, uh, county health uh, hospitals, referral hospitals, through the managed equipment program, among others. We, as a Chuck family, wish to appeal to the government of Kenya to support church health facilities so that they can continue to grow, become strong, and become sustainable as they um, provide critical supplement, uh, they supplement government efforts. In the areas that we need support include a tax exemption on donated medical equipment and supplies, a secondment of health workers, you know, funding support, allocation of medical equipment uh, and essential medicines. We can also receive and uh, very well manage and make sure this equipment in the managed program uh, are also utilized for the benefit of the people. So in conclusion, we congratulate um, His Excellency Daniel Moy, the Kabarak University, the government of Kenya, uh, development partners, and all key stakeholders for the groundbreaking and the launch of this landmark project. And we want to assure you of our prayers and total commitment and support uh, to the end. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, sir. Once again, we appreciate these wonderful words of encouragement educating us as to what God is doing in our day, and we are all partakers. Let me ask that the following will, will come in the order that is prescribed in our program. Let me ask now that uh, to introduce the university project team, Dr. John Kibosia will come as the chair of the task force committee. As soon as he's through, I'll be asking that he'll be followed by our brother Philemon Kimutai Kaino, 
who is the project director, Cabrac University. He has worked tirelessly. I'm not quite sure he slept last night. If you see him dozing, you can uh, forgive uh, the work, not him. Then after that, we will be asking that uh, Christopher Gray, the CEO of Sigent International, will be here also to give his remarks. And then Farid will follow um, uh, Christopher. And then from the Samaritan Purse International, who uh, have been a partner representing Franklin Graham, will uh, conclude those remarks in that order. Karibuni. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to take this opportunity first to uh, appreciate uh, His Excellency, uh, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uru Kenyatta, for sending uh, his representative, uh, Dr. Cleopa Mailu. Also want to appreciate the presence of Senator Gideon Moy, who is representing the Chancellor and the founder of Kabarak, uh, Honorable Daniel Troy Ticharap Moy, who was the second president of the Republic of Kenya and an elder statesman in this country. I want to also appreciate the coming of all the bishops, uh, Karibu Nisana, for this project. Uh, we have Senator uh, Zipora Kitoin. We have uh, a member of the council whom I uh, will be introducing later, um, Honorable uh, Raymond Moy. I want to also say uh, thank you very much for all those who have uh, attended this ceremony. Before I continue, I want to introduce, as I was told, as you have seen here, the project team. I have served as the chair of the task force to establish the medical school here and the hospital, uh, which today we have the pleasure of having his Excellency through Dr. Cleopo Mailu have the groundbreaking ceremony. So I think uh, members, please, we want to appreciate you. We, we have the medical team and we also have the other technical, Fundi, Ilwana Jenga, Sindio, Ebu Tuone Musmame, Dean, you are a member as the Dean of uh, Faculty of Health Sciences, Dr. To. Wapi Wengine. I can see Tarus. Is that you? Yes, I can see Dr. Kebene. We started with Dr. Kebene way in 20, was this 2007? 09, actually, is when we started properly. But we started with her in 2007. Uh, Dr. Dalman, thank you very much. Uh, where are the others? Simon, where is engineer? Oh, engineer Simon, there you are. Uh, am I seeing anybody else? Architect Tarus, this is the man who has done most of the, this great work. And the artwork you're seeing, that is the man who has with his team. Uh, I think we have also uh, Philemon, who will talk later. He was also part of the uh, task force. And also we have Dr. Paclea. He was not able to come. Uh, he's a consultant surgeon in Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital. We have Tarus, who is the chief nurse in Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital. 
you are not able to join us. Now, this team uh, was have had the task of uh, making sure that what we are launching today uh, happen. And um, I want to just say that this team has done a tremendous work. It's a local team. It's a volunteer team. And uh, we have uh, today celebrated uh, the success of that. We did this not because of anything else, but for me personally, it was um, something that happened. You know, the, um, His Excellency President Moy, when he took over in 1978, I joined the University of Nairobi to do medicine. Uh, one day he invited us to his uh, Cabernet Garden house. I remember very well, and uh, he was in a very good mood, welcomed all of us. We are not many uh, from my home area. So, and uh, we introduced ourselves. When it reached my turn, uh, he asked me, and he was asking us, we say the name and what you're doing. So I said, I'm doing medicine. He said, where do you come from? I, so I told him where I come from. Uh, the former president has a very good memory, even to date. He remembered and he told me, do you come from a place called Chabara? I said, yes, sir. Do you, you are the son of Mze Kibosia? I said, yes, sir. And uh, he was very happy for me. And uh, of course, I felt nice being, uh, <laughs> being, being uh, <laughs> recognized by a, a president. <laughs> and uh, so he said he knows my family very well. And uh, so one of the things he said, though, was, you know, there's a problem with us. <laughs> this you'll forgive me, Bishop <laughs> AIC. He says, AIC founder was this, the older people of AIC. The children did not do very well. They are not very, they are not doing very well. So I'm very happy to see uh, one of the founder's children doing well. I didn't know what well means, but I think in essence, he's thought, he said he can see somebody out there. He says the problem with uh, second generation, we, as what we call ourselves, uh, AIC members, is that we really took to the bottle. We started, uh, we didn't plan to go. We're not good. I'm not saying I was good, <laughs> but maybe I was better among the, the not so good people. And... Um, but what he said was, I want one day build a hospital in Eldoret. We'll start a medical school in Eldoret. Of course, that time you don't know whether you believe him or not. But he added, Ata Kabarak to Tajenga. And you know, that's way back in 1978. Of course, I forgot all about it. And, Life continues. Of course, we had a very good life with him. When I got married, he was there for me. Uh, and uh, when I finished my uh, surgery uh, course in Nairobi, uh, I was also uh, feeling, you know, uh, I wanted to remain in Nairobi. Now, where, what does a surgeon like me, I thought I was very big, you know, going to a village. But one day I got in, uh, word that I must report in Eldoret. Uh, of course I did. I reported in Eldoret. I did not regret it, by the way, after reporting in Eldoret. Then that is when the medical school started. And we made it a reality. We built Boy Teaching and Referral Hospital from 1990 
Up to 99, we finished, and he came and opened. But he never reminded me, I didn't remind him either, when he said, I'll build a hospital where? In Eldoret. Uh, this particular hospital, uh, he never appointed me. I came on my own and uh, reminded, I told the president, I am here to build the other hospital that you told me in 1978. And this is the Kabarak University Hospital, which we are witnessing today. I'm doing it, I said I'll do it out of uh, the love uh, for the president and also uh, for the love of our people. One of the things that, you know, I had an opportunity, thank God, uh, the, with the appointment of the president, I was able to go all over the world and see other hospitals. And I said, the next hospital that we'll build, when we were building Eldoret, I had not gone anywhere. I had not even seen good hospital. We said the next hospital we'll build will be a world class. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to cheat you. This hospital is truly, truly world class. <laughs> This team has visited the local, visited the local hospitals, visited the mission hospital, public hostel, private hostel in this country, and also outside this country to come up with what you've seen today, something very magnificent. Uh, I don't want to take more of your time. Maybe I've talked too much, but I want to assure you that what this team has come up with, with now our international uh, partners, we are hoping that things like fundraising to India, fundraising to South Africa, fundraising I don't know to where else, will be a thing of the past. People will.